Hello, my dear creative friends. Today we are going to paint another vintage flower, a vintage rose. Um, it's from this wonderful book that I have here called The Book of Flowers. And uh, if you're ready, let's dive right into the video. So this is the reference photo that I'm going to show you. And it's from this really beautiful book called The Book of Flowers. I do use this book quite a lot when I'm painting flowers. It's a great resource for vintage floral inspiration. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested. But in any case, this is the one I'm painting today. And it is the Duchess of the Orleans. And what I really like about this, it's got a hero bloom and three or four extra little buds coming from behind, which is going to be tricky to do because uh, you got to create a bit of depth and it, it, I'm going to try to make it look like a, or look less like a three or a five headed monster, if you, if you know what I mean. I love how the leaves are formed and fall and all the different hues and that greens. So yeah, let's, let's start painting this. I'm going to go and grab my half inch no actually let's do let's do my three quarter inch flat uh, Princeton Heritage and immediately going straight into a, my coral quinacridum coral creating a little puddle here with lots of water because I want to keep the petals quite light to begin with okay um, I will actually grab my smaller brush now which is a size for silver black velvet round and grab a bit of cadmium yellow because sometimes it's nice to start with the yellow stamen in the middle to just give a nice center of focus for you to create the flower out of and it's also nice to see the colors bloom a little bit then going back to my three-quarter flat and just making the first few marks of petals that can go around this flower. So if you've gone a bit too wet, you can wipe your brush off and just gently feel your way around the center with just dabs. And then as you work your way out, creating bigger petals with the corner of the brush. Uh, varying the hue, so grabbing my quinacridone, sorry, my permanent yellow, uh, per permanent rose, eh. and then a deeper hue of the coral. And just using that to make my way around this flower. Okay. And uh, you are guaranteed to not be perfect at this stage. But I've done this so much that I actually don't even try to achieve, try to achieve any kind of perfection because I know that it's it's almost what what do you say? It's um uh, what's the word? It's <laughs> fruitless. <laughs> yes. The more you try, the less perfect it will look, you know? Especially the loose floral florals. Because you try so hard to create that perfect fluffiness. And half the time I feel like the more I try. <laughs> the more horrible it turns out okay so oh my gosh let it go and let the brush just dance around the flower keeping your eyes on the reference and then on the page on the reference on the page and don't worry about um, how it all looks at every stage once in a while, you can pull your gaze out to, to have a little review, but otherwise, um, yeah, I find with perfect, with getting stuff right, the harder you try, the worse it gets. So just have a sense of letting go a little bit. So I'm just using a bit of uh, a gamboge to go around 
the center to just let that center darken a little bit. I'm quite happy with how this looks. Not too tight, not too loose. I think I did go a bit tight. I just, I just as I was talking about perfection, I, uh, my, my hands just um, followed what my, <laughs> I was saying and I think it went a bit tight. Okay, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna grab a bit of this dragon's blood. I don't know how it will be. Maybe it might be too dark. Yes, it is. Okay, never mind. Carmine. Just choosing a bit of carmine and just dropping a little bit of that darkness to the center of some of this. I forgot to mention I'm using my Arches, Arches watercolor pad. That one here. So 100% cotton and uh, it performs really well and it most of the time does what you want it to do, which is not go too crazy, not, not um, dry unevenly. All right, I am going it way too tight. I can feel it. Okay, let's pull out the stems and some leaves, okay? Grabbing my uh, big three quarter inch flat, grabbing sap green, I think that's sap green, I don't even know anymore, sometimes I just get a bit lost with what's in my greens. Just sap green and a bit of the shadow green, a bit of Prussian blue, mix it all up and then pull a nice, let's see, where does this go? A nice thin as possible, thorny stem down. You can add the thorns in later. Uh, yeah. Not sure if that appeared a bit too fat, but it is what it is. I will make the same mistake with the stem sticking out. So grabbing my thinner half inch flat, I'm gonna pull out a stem here, a stem here, and a stem here, imaginary stem here. Just looking at my reference, okay? And stem here. And then I'm going to go back to the three quarter inch flat to pull up some very loose leaves using the corner of the brush. And there's one here that goes this way. And it's this way. Varying the cue. Varying. Green gold, one up here, one down here, and just having a bit of fun to create different intensity of leaves. drop a bit of that a bit of purple a bit of pink in your leaves because then it will create a nice little harmonious look with the rest of the flower I wouldn't mess with it too much more after this okay we're gonna work on some of the buds that are sticking out and behind and in my reference, the buds look a little bit uh, darker in value because maybe they are a bit closed up. So I'm going to mix a bit of carmine red, which I need to fill up. It's maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson into that coral mix. And with the buds, just one or two strokes, one or two strokes. Bigger one here, and then teeny one here. And that's it. I'm going to grab a round brush, maybe a, this one size six, silver black velvet. Going into the uh, green and pulling out some of those little green leafy bits that go underneath. 
each of the bird. Hmm. And there, it's coming together. Um, it's always nice to add a bit of thorns in if you're doing some, doing a rose, like a stalk of rose, because it gives it a, a nice, almost quite realistic effect because it's like telling your viewer that this is a rose. Okay, the thorns of the rose, like, ooh, so scary. Dropping a bit of that thorn color in some of my leaves while it's still wet. And there, I'm feeling like I need like a lighter leaf somewhere at the back here. Just gone a bit. One back, back there, and then one in the back there. And then we're gonna leave it for now, wait for it to dry, and then we can add some details to it. And we are back with my beautiful vintage rose. What are we gonna do for the next layer? So just gonna add a bit of shadows, a bit of detail. I'm gonna grab that same coral, but making a more thicker mixture of it. Okay, and just finding opportunities to place some thin lines over the outside edges of some of the petals and then some in the middle. Hmm. And when I'm doing the layering stage, my objective, my very broad objective in my mind is not to like, ooh, I have to create shadows that make it realistic, I need to make it pop or anything like that. My objective is to just increase interest and depth. Increase interest and depth and there can be so many ways to achieve that, right? If you think of your objective as something as broad as that. So it could be a line here, a mark there, a swoosh here, um, uh, a little adjustment there. You can change up your brush. I will grab this one here, which is my size one liner brush, and then experiment with that and experiment with another color. So grabbing that deep purpley, burnt umber mixture and using the thin brush to feel what it's like to create some lines and then if it doesn't work and you're like okay maybe not you can always just soften it down by adding water and sometimes you know where you're going and sometimes you don't and it's totally fine. Eventually, some days especially, it'll be clearer for you and some days less clear, okay? And uh, it's the whole journey. That is the whole journey. I'm putting some of that darkness into the middle of the rose here. I'm going to leave the middle for now, okay? I'm feeling a little bit like, I'm not sure where I'm going with that. So I'm just going around the, the other small buds. Darkening the center. Providing some little detail around. And then for my leaves, I am going to go and just pull out some veins. Pull out some veins. That can give us a little bit of a hint of definition, like, uh, yeah, 
I know what I'm talking about. I have these leaves, I have these veins. And they're not just some blurry mess. It's in the background. You can add lines to every leaf, every other leaf. It's up to you. Okay, do it till you're bored. Keep going if you want to pass time. This is your full agency, your painting, you decide. <sighs> All right. So, um, I am pausing just to take in the flower here. And I'm just wondering if I should paint a background, a nice fun dreamy background. And if I did that, what color would it be? But I think today I'm not going to. I'm gonna stop. My kids are coming home from school soon. So there you have it. This is my rose from my favorite book, Book of Flowers. I hope you enjoyed it. And there you have it, the vintage rose. Very simple, very loose, uh, sketchy. It's got a bit of an abstract vibe. I hope you enjoy painting with me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment and please subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.